create the front Sydney. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This is France Sydney and this is Create with France. So how to create the life that you want by following neuroscience, NLP, RTT techniques that we learn as psychotherapists and therapists and of which one is with me today. So first of all, I'm going to say hello to her. Her name is Fiorella Martin and she is calling from Australia. So hello and welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me. It's so great to have you, Fiorella. We all know Fiorella is an amazing psychotherapist, RTT therapist and coach, helps people with relationships. If you don't know that, you have to go and check her out. And there will be lots of links on the bottom of this episode and you will see where to contact her. Why would you? Because she's such a good specialist. She will tell you all about why relationships fail. And especially, we're going to focus today on you, the woman who is smart, successful, good looking, good, you know, everything, fashion, uh, you can do a conversation about everything, you you are like, you know, 3D, everything, the whole thing, you have success at work, everything is good, but you cannot find a man, I mean, you have lots of men around, but you cannot find the man, just the right one to stay, to have a really good relationship, and you wonder, what's wrong with me? I'm so good at work, I'm so good with everything, but there must be something there. And then after much work, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes we find out that there was an emotional reason for that. We're attracting the wrong people. How? How does this happen? That an amazing woman with spirituality and whole, wholesome character um, can sew, can cook, can ride horses, can, you know, everything, but she cannot. I mean, you're going to have to tell me that. So... Let's get me started with these symptoms. What happens to this successful woman? Describe the dates that she has. <laughs> uh, you've described them really well. I've met a few of them, uh, obviously, and uh, they are very much got everything together, their lives together. They have the clothes, the lifestyle, the trips, the holidays, everything. And what happens is they attract younger men they attract toy boys, they attract men who maybe are successful, wealthy, but not emotionally available and, and those relationships don't last. So the symptoms are perfectionism. Often there is a the sense of self that is not true, they're not authentic. Imposter syndrome. They have many symptoms and that means that deep down inside they're not connected with themselves, they're not embodied with themselves and they actually have their pickers broken. So they wonder why I can't find true love and why I end up being um, hurt all the time. They act very masculine, these men. They're independent, super independent, and when they are super independent, they charge in in a way that doesn't work with masculine men. So those those relationships never work out. Deep down, they have a lot of hurt. So from outside, you look at them and you think, oh, they she she's got everything. So from the looks, from a photo on Instagram, you would think this woman has it all. She, you know, you are trying to lose weight. She's got it. She's muscular. She's got the job. And then deep inside, she's going to bed and thinking, what's wrong with me? And then what I, I, I like to hear is imposter syndrome. Can you explain? Because until I became a therapist, I really didn't know what imposter syndrome is. I read it when I studied psychology. So what is it, this imposter syndrome that this successful women have it's all external um so they have a, what they think the world wants them to be like and it's a disconnection between their true self it's a disconnection between their who they really are supposed to be authentically but because they've not had the right mirroring the right secure foundation is, they don't really know who they're supposed to be so they create 
create this external representation of what they think they should be and even if they really become really good at their job even if they become really good at their careers there is this doubt that someone will find them out that they're just pretending to be something there's lots of evidence that they're good at their job there's lots of evidence that they have friends that they are attractive but inside the little younger part of them who's never had that embedded from a young age feels that there's a disconnect and they feel that they're they're um, faking it all the time that people are, are going to find out that they're not really like that they're not really that good that's what important it's a it's a real dissonance between the internal heart child and emotional self and what's represented out in the world mm-hmm. and so then going deeper when you work with them as a therapist what are the usual findings that you have during your sessions that that take you back to their past to see where they form these beliefs that are not helping at all where where do you start working with them i mean there must be a lot of work to get all this luggage out Actually, I've been doing this for 22 years and uh, one of the most important things for people to do, in fact, it happens even before I see them, it's uh, part of my intake and I have other assessments as well once we start. But the most important one is called ACES test, which is advan- Adverse Childhood Events. It's 10 questions, it's free, it's available online and people can answer these questions and these questions were formulated by a neuroscientist and they're all about anything that can happen between 0 and 18 years old and any of those will classify as a traumatic experience an adverse experience which leaves a different sense of belief a different sense of self uh, a different sense of attachment uh, from the parents so therefore it's one of the most important tests that people do and once I see that test and we have a strategy call we then start to look at the complexity of that because even if one question is answered yes it may be the one that has created the most damage to the child's brain a typical one is where the parent made the child feel unseen, feel unguided, unsupported, ignored. And we're not even talking about physical harm here. We're not even talking about neglect, not enough food on the table or clothes. This is where there is a coldness with the parent, an emotional distance and unavailability. And that is one of the most damaging ones because the child feels completely alone lost and at, uh, by themselves so i need to look at all of those factors and we start unraveling the things that have happened to them neutralize them restore that sense of self reparenting the self there is a lot of work that has to be done in the first stage to create a secure attachment person to restore the sense of self value and self-worth and lovability. Those are very important three factors. The other three factors that are important is the right to exist, yes. the right to have their needs met, and the right to feel welcome with joy. These are the things we work on in the first stage before we even start looking at what is the right person to choose, what questions to ask, how to navigate those first dates. Mm. So very deep work. And I'm sure that there will be some people in the audience who might be thinking, right, that's me. That's what I do. I met this wonderful guy, but he disappeared. Why people ghost me? And, you know, there are jerks, men and women who can be jerks and they go and that's fine. But sometimes two wonderful people meet, but they don't have enough communication skills going to understand what's behind this Shield that some people put in front, like I'm so successful and so amazing and so brilliant, 
And at the same time, I so much need to have a partner. I might be needy or clingy or might come out as arrogant or rude or whatever. So the person that would probably fit us very well for a long-term relationship or even marriage might pick up with an antenna a negative feeling and, and go. So why is it that a man in particular is not attracted to a woman like the one you described in the beginning of a conversation? What is that turns him off? When a man who is masculine meets a woman who's also very masculine, by that I mean that she's dominant, uh, overly assertive, not just assertive, and very tough, comes across as a businesswoman in a dating situation. A man feels emasculated, doesn't want to compete with that. He needs a woman to be feminine, to be easy to get along with rather than feel under attack. So the masculine and the masculine don't match. Two alpha people will clash. That's why men disappear. And we look for a woman. So there is a huge difference between the woman in 1800 or 1970 where the man commands and the woman obeys and she submitted or how it is in certain culture today, cultures. And, and then the other, you know, we can't, we can't just go from one to the other. We have to find a happy balance that makes everyone happy. So let's say that a person is listening in this moment to the audience and there may be 30, 40, 50, 60, and they don't have a person in their life. They would love to have a companion again, but they all seem to disappear. And they're thinking, well, maybe I had to tone down my sense of self because, you know, maybe she has a PhD, maybe she's a millionaire, <laughs> maybe she's a director of a huge company, and she cannot find a man that can stand up to her. But maybe she's too distant for this man. And at some, at some point, there are some men who will not even try. They like a woman who is successful, good-looking, well-groomed. But they think, oh, she's just inaccessible for me because she's so high there. Because she doesn't, she's like, she's got this shield, invisible shield. And maybe that is because she, despite the appearances, deep down would love a relationship, but for because of this trauma or neglect or having cold parents or maybe a single parent they didn't have time but she she grows up thinking well all I can do is work because I'm not worth to be loved and so that she's sending that vibe that must be terrible so imagine that this woman is listening now and and she said right Fiorella what can I do then what should I do because that's that's me I can't change I'm accomplished, you know, I'm a boss. I've got 200 people working for me. What can I do then? Give us suggestions. <laughs> yeah, work is work. Relationship is different. One of the things that you've accurately identified is that women build that armor, build that shield, because that's how they get to have a sense of themselves in the world. It's also to protect that little hurt child they are survivors. They win and succeed. So they actually have a sense of identity in the world. Except that doesn't work in relationships. So when you go on a date, to put that to one side, have a shower, put moisturizer on, feel like a woman, put some nice music on, become feminine and go in with that energy rather than a business meeting. And of course, working on the deeper issues will help because they will surface, especially once they get intimate. If a woman becomes intimate too quickly with the wrong man, she will become passive aggressive. She won't know how to ask for her needs and the aggression will come out. Interesting. You know, sometimes people think, well, if I sleep with him, he's going to stay with me longer because he likes me. But actually, it doesn't really work like that. I think it's because of what a man is looking for in a woman when he's intimate. It's not what a woman is looking for in a man when she's intimate. 
That's right. Women have an oxytocin hormone, which even by kissing starts to bond them to the man. So they have to be careful not to bond to the wrong man. It takes time to get to know someone. And I say to my clients, why would you want to sleep with someone you don't know yet? Because the most important decision you'll ever make is the person you choose to be in a relationship with. And also the worst decision you'll ever make is the person you bond with. Because if you don't know them, how do you know what you're getting yourself into? It is so true. And um, I am in lots of groups of singles and I, and I hear this story all the time. We met, he gave me flowers, he bombarded me with attention. I finally felt loved. My mom was so critical. My dad was never home. Finally, somebody who appreciates me. We got married after three, four or five months. And then after a couple of months, I realized, well, this guy is a jerk or abusive or toxic or mischeating or is a narcissist, whatever. He's not what he portrayed it to be. They didn't have time to really understand what was behind. So obviously, there's no point in rushing into such a deep relationship quickly because you really want to know the person, especially if you've been hurt so much, you holding this deep ingrained trauma which is stored in your body and it might come out quite ugly on the other side because you can't trust the guy at all you know and or maybe you become very clingy oh he's gonna leave me everyone left me all my boyfriends left me my parents left me my dad went my mom died so it's very complex so if a person wants to start over this path of having therapy do I have to have many sessions to take care of this problem do you think Depending on how old the person is and depending on how much trauma there has been, it can take a while. Hmm. It can take a while because we have to reprogram the brain. We have to rewire the brain. We have to recreate the authentic self. So it depends on how much trauma there has been because just because a person is successful doesn't mean that they're not carrying quite a lot of um, trauma that has to be resolved. So, and even saying that, I have had a client in Paris who, after two months of, after we've done the initial work, she met someone and he became her husband. There we go. And she was exactly that type of person. She had, she's very high up in the banking industry and has had a successful career. She was having a lot of problems meeting the right person. And after two months, she was able to meet someone and is happily married now. So good. I love happy ending stories. That is so good to know. And um, is there any other word of wisdom you would like to share with our audience before we go? Other words of wisdom is getting to know oneself, reading books on attachment styles, doing tests on attachment styles, because that's also a free test online. Once you know where your attachment style is and do the ACE test online, you will at least have a baseline of what sort of things you need to work with. Study feminine energy and embodiment. If you follow those steps, you'll be a lot closer to having the patience, taking time and not rushing in. Get to know someone, take your time, and that way, at least you'll eliminate, this is my uh, formula, is eliminate at least 90% of people online that cannot engage in a normal conversation about your pro. That's my best tips. Yeah. I was also thinking, although I never do this in the end of an episode, but today I feel like doing that. Okay. I was just thinking, I don't know if it's just the Hollywood movies or not, the corporate woman goes to work dresses like office high up stuff suits and whatever high heels as she goes up and up she's dressing more and more masculine blazer <laughs> even ties trousers she's trying not to be too sexy she cannot be sexy she cannot be good looking she has to be serious so the hair is all there she might have glasses she has to look the part and she speaks like that and she's like quite tough there it's very hard for a woman to be taken seriously is she's very, very feminine, very, very warm, very friendly. Because they think, well, that's not 
That's not the boss. If a boss is like that, that's fine. But for a woman, you see that they toughen up a lot when they go to CEO levels. I mean, I see a lot of men, a lot of them, women, that are really dressed up like, oh, I'm ready for battle here. Look how serious I am. <laughs> and that probably is a bit of a stereotype in society that a woman has to look like this, has to look like that, so that she can be taken seriously. So that's um, maybe something to think about, the way that we dress even if we don't have behaviors that will tell something wrong, we might be giving this impression to a man that we are dressed in, in, in such a stern, commandeering way that we give his message, I'm, I'm the boss. <laughs> and then the man, because, you know, one image gives you a million pieces of information. So you look at this woman with a higher blazer, all, you know, Versace stuff, all well done, the hair impeccable, everything perfect nails, perfect nails, all designer, and then she's like a tough woman, you know, and you think, ooh, <laughs> what am I going to deal with? <laughs> Actually, a good a good movie to watch is The Devil Wears Prada. Ah. And the reason for that is that women look stylish, but still professional. They still look womanly, and it's still very attractive. So it doesn't have to be over, overly sexual and trashy can actually look feminine and very uh, elegant, smart, feminine. Uh, I have friends who work in corporate and that's how they dress. So there is a a way of of looking well in um, corporate and still look very attractive. And also perhaps because maybe a woman thinks, well, if I look too attractive, men will give me the wrong attention instead of treating me as their boss. So there is always this dichotomy. dichotomy. So it's, it's important to look at all the aspects. So whatever the message we're giving, with our tone of voice, how we talk or not talk, what we're saying and not saying, how we text, how we trying to pay all the time. <laughs> Some men, I can't, they can't even pay. But they go for me, no, I want to pay. I'm independent. Do you have to pay if you offer? You know? So there are lots of questions we can ask ourselves and I'm not here to tell you what to do because I'm not in corporate and I'm not a rich successful woman with millions and looking for a man they look for me i got my man anyway so but i'm saying it's not my work but yeah it's it's i think it's always worth having another look and thinking well if i don't have anyone in my life is it because they're all terrible men or is it because i'm giving that message that i'm just sufficient alone i'm i'm enough on my own i don't need anyone you know my life is perfect anyway i don't need men I can do this. And I read this from a lot of divorced women because, of course, you have to learn how to use screwdrivers and, and head trimmers and all this stuff. And many, like, I can do anything. I don't need a man. Well, that's not the point, is it? <laughs> Absolutely not. So the message of self-sufficiency. <laughs> Sorry, you were No, it, I, I agree. Some women go all the way out, whereas uh, instead you can actually ask a friend or you can hire someone. You don't have to become that masculine. It's, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not too bad. And also you can learn to do the stuff, but don't just throw it on him. Say, well, I don't need a man because I can do everything. I'll fix my car, do everything. Just get out of here. <laughs> How is he going to be incredibly attracted to you? Because you don't need him. You can do everything. So why is he there at all? So that could be an interesting point of view. I'm not here That's in, right. as a man, but why would he be in your life? <laughs> Absolutely. Men like to be the hero in your life. And if you don't let them, um, yeah, they feel they have no space there. There is there's, no space. Yeah. There's too much of a masculine energy to compete yeah. with. Let men be the hero and let women be the hero. That could be a nice title for this. Yeah, the woman needs to be the queen and he can be the que- the hero. And he can be the hero or the queen. The queen and the king, basically the royal couple. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's a good message and a supporting message for all those who are looking for somebody and yet do not have any luck. And maybe it's a little bit of introspection and looking maybe if we need a little bit of therapy just to dig a little bit deeper and see what's actually going on inside. So thank you so much. Fiorella Martin, all the way from Australia. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure and I hope you guys had a great time and you're ready to click like, share this episode with all your friends and of course, if you like, subscribe. See you all next week. Bye-bye. You listen to Create with Franz Disney.